bit of a Sunday update. What am I doing? What am I going on with? This is a prime example of why I messed around with the green screen too much. The Macs have a fixed camera lens, so I can't zoom in or out. As you can see, the lens is too broad. So to have the, to have the green screen work, or as I've just put what a sample background up on here, um, I'd have to have it right up behind me and about this wide. And quite simply, that's just stupid. The other thing you've got is I have got other webcams, but at the same time, Mac being the Apple parasite company it is, locks everything into itself. So it doesn't really work well with other cameras. Um, but I'll work my way around it. But in all honesty, if I do go green screen, it's probably gonna end up that I'll do it with the um, camcorder or something else. But I just wanted to point out, this is why I don't use a green screen because Mac in their wisdom do things like this uh, to suit themselves. Yeah, anyway, um, what else has been going on? Somebody did ask me about where does all the cash come from? Well, I made, made some good money on crypto, but at the same time, it's now going sideways. A lot of stuff going on in the crypto space that I don't really want to drag everybody into the conversation around. But if you look up stuff related to mainnet, these are people who are setting up their own blockchains. The mainnet is actually the ability to transact from A, which is the transaction from one person to another, A to B. That becomes the mainnet. That's the it in its simplistic form. But when these um, projects become mainnet, it means things can actually start getting built. It's a bit like going from an idea to actually building something. You know, at the end of the day, you've thought about it, and now you're putting down the foundations. And it's got to the foundation stage with at least seven with mainnet in the last six weeks. And these are good investments. Not all of them, um, but it's worth taking a look at yourself. There's, there's some of them got some teething problems, but some of them like VU chain, I am expecting to see some movement on. But don't expect massive movements. It's already valued at $1.46 billion. It hasn't done anything yet. It will improve, but it will take time. Um, because it already has an involvement with BMW. Um, the owner uh, come from uh, Louis Vuitton. He was Leo Vuitton China. He was the head of Leo Vuitton China. Um, he understands supply chain, supply chain, anti counterfeiting, etc., etc. There's food companies going on there as well that can validate where this stuff's come from, where it's going to. Uh, cigarettes are going on there for China. There's alcohol going on there for China. There's a lot of stuff going on it. And that's why VE Chain is one of those ones to watch because it also gets BMW supply chain on it and Renault because it's also working with Renault as well. Then you can see why 1.46 billion in the next couple of years could see some significant growth with mass adoption. But the market is generally going sideways. So uh, for me, I'm like sort of in and out i'm just leaving it i'm not trying to trade anything up at the minute because a lot of stuff going on is not predictable i mean a lot of people say oh yes it's this it's that and they go oh the market's down because of this then then today they haven't said anything because they have no idea why it's up um the answer to that is they were wrong when they were down a lot of it is just going sideways a lot of the stuff is not correct um a lot of the fud out there um which is all the negative media is often of zero value because it's constants. You know, if you've got something that's constantly going on anyway and you just put media story out of something that's been going on for three months, uh, some people may see that, oh, that's why the market's down today. In fact, it's been ongoing anyway. It's, it's not made any difference. But anyway, see, I'm locking myself into crypto. Moving off that. So that's going to one side. Made some good money on it. Done some bits and pieces. But right now I need to get a few more projects going. Why am I choosing locksmithing and the aircon? Well, the answer is I have a history in these industries. The locksmithing I've done before, the set of picks should be arriving in two to three days with the mail service I paid for at the United Kingdom. I'm saying it with a straight face, it's two weeks with Spain. Um, you just pay extra, it doesn't get any, any faster. And then people go, you can't say mañana, mañana about the Spanish. That's, you're not allowed to do that, but it's true. It is true. It's the same with Amazon. Amazon Prime, even I've had people say before, he says, yeah, you, Amazon Prime, even in Madrid, you can get a Prime if you're in Madrid. <laughs> yeah, but they can pay for it anyway. They just don't deliver it. Um, and a lot of time, it's just as fast to get it down from Germany. 
and cheaper. But anyway, moving on from that. So the locksmithing is something I do have a keen interest in anyway. I like doing it. I find it interesting. I also want to do maintenance and stuff because it can set me up as a small business here. And I'll, I'll quite happily potter around in a van just doing bits and pieces uh, to keep myself entertained. You know, I'm looking at disabled adaptions as well. We have an aging population. It makes sense. Um, I'm also looking at the aircon side, which will probably end up getting funded out me doing emergency locksmithing and other bits and pieces, um, stuff I can do with the tools I already have, because air conditioning will probably set me up. I think, all in all, to get me set up the same way I was in the UK before, it cost me about £2,000, and that's just on the tools and stuff. Um, but at the same time, it will take no time to get that money back. Um, when I used to do locksmithing in the UK, I could make £700 in one night sometimes. You won't make it all, all week, don't get me wrong, but you'd, I mean, I'd average at least 900 to £1,500 a week just working nights. You know, I'm talking just going out, call at 2 o'clock in the morning, go drive somebody's house 10 minutes away, open the door in 10 minutes, drive back and back in bed within half an hour. You know, so all in all 45 minutes um, so the point being is you do that a few times a night you're not really putting yourself out but you know what when you're stood outside especially in this sort of weather you don't mind paying to get somebody to open your door for you and that's why I do it and at the same time it's one of those businesses that is hard to replicate because when I did my first load of locks I sat for two days opening 300 different types of lock um, and even now I've got test locks in the back and I don't mind teaching people how to do this stuff either I'm quite keen to do that actually um, but I can see there is a market for doing things right the pH testing and stuff is important and even if I was doing it for other people I don't mind you know at the end of the day I come from facilities management and one of the important things I do is actually prove things pe people haven't been doing their job that's one of the fundamental things I do um, because when I evaluate a contract, it's based on the quality and condition of the equipment. So when somebody says, well, we've maintained it constantly, we've done this, and I go, no, you haven't. When I open the air conditioning unit, the belts are browned. I can see the, the, the rust on the uh, pulleys, etc. That hasn't been maintained in at least a year and a half. And, and then I found others with broken bells. I found that your BMS system showing half the system isn't even operational. I can see dampers are jammed. I can see all sorts of stuff. The point being is, that's what I do. So, you know, for example, say this development here, they pay a maintenance company and they've had their, had their pool and that tested and they're, they're doping it and doing everything for them. Nothing wrong with paying me 20 euros to come along and just dope it uh, once a fortnight or once a month to check that they're actually doing it. That's just good business practice. Don't trust anybody. I assume everyone's lying. That way you can actually crawl back some wasted money. I mean, I, I did it on RBS, RBS Bank. One building and we took over and they asked me, could I analyze it? I crawled back 29,000 pounds in a week because they hadn't maintained a lot of it. And we had to install it. They had two options. We will install it or we will bill you for it. Uh, sorry, we'll install it and bill you for it or you fix it yourself. Our point being that there is written things in a contract relating to light and efficiencies and bits and pieces, those bits missing off of the generator as well, but that's another story. Uh, but there was 29,000 pounds just recovered from things that they supposedly had been maintaining. And that goes by just going around and analyzing things. But anyway, maintenance is something I'm interested in, always have been anyway. Um, I like venturing, I like having my hands on, and that's why I end up with lots of bits and pieces I tinker around with because I like doing it. Um, but long term, I do think it's good. I also think that um, because of the quality issues that you often face here in Spain, and the other thing is, I do notice this a lot on Facebook as well people hijack posts. You know, they'll say, Oh, do you know somebody who's not reliable? Is? And you'll get 10 posts from. Uh, certain people a lot of that is rigged <laughs> in the same way um, I find that 
within certain industries that work in the same way as well they will put their friends forward regardless of their quality because they're friends because they get referrals off them it is not about quality and for me i don't like it <laughs> i hate it the standard here is putting people off a lot of the time so myself i'd rather raise the standard and uh, that's what i'm focusing on next um April's mother is going back to the Philippines soon as well. She's had a good holiday. She's enjoyed it. Um, I am hoping to see her before Christmas again as well. So I'm looking forward to uh, April's mother coming back on holiday. Um, one of the things we are going to be fundamentally looking at is more cash generation for the next few months, though, because we're, we're, I mean, we're okay, but at the same time, it's like anything. We've gone through the the hardship, <laughs> the hardship of dealing with all the embassies and all this sort of stuff to the point of where we are now and now we're in that position to move forward properly so this is where we start developing things so I'm looking forward to that um, yeah I think I've covered nearly everything everybody's asked me recently yeah and one of the things I do is recommend and that's why I say I don't mind teaching somebody if they want to learn how to locksmith I'll, I can teach you through YouTube I can teach you through uh, videos um, the same as if there is certain things that people want to learn I don't mind doing it to a point but I'm not going to sit there for 8 hours with you trying to teach you lock, uh, pick locks um, locks are something that you learn I mean the, the tension is more like that when you're, when you're um, putting tension on a lock that's the sort of pressure you look at virtually nothing virtually nothing because what you're trying to do is lift the pins but it's not a difficult thing to do if you just sit there and concentrate on it and you get to a point where you can open them in no time um, yeah I, I like doing it and I, there's a huge market here because obviously you've got a lot of repossessions you've got a lot of um, holiday makers that lose the keys on the beach or the bag stolen you have a lot of people that simply um, one extra keys and things so key cuttings another side sideline on this um, but the same with the aircon a lot of people do not clean the aircon they just leave it to burn out now what you've got to remember if you don't put a cover on them which many people don't hear they get full of sand and it just grinds into the the the, um, the bearings etc it doesn't do them any favors so people will go well, yeah but they're only 500 euros to to get a new one and I agree with you I'll install it <laughs> I'll, just, I'll install it or you can just pay 40, 40 euros every three months and I can service it for you up to you I don't care I'll take the money um, but yeah I mean I've got to admit I'm in better better spirits more recently because we are getting in a position where I want to be um, because up until we got April's mother over, April's paperwork sorted, and all the bits that are related to moving here. Um, it's been a bloody nightmare because I want to do this, but I can't. I've got to hold money back um, because I've then had to use money for X, Y, Z. Paying, like for example, the the flights for the Philippines and back, it cost me over 2,000 euros. And then obviously I've had expenditure in the Philippines and expenditure in Europe as well. It's all been condensed. And then there's other stuff that's gone on top of that, but if we got it the way we wanted, we wouldn't have been traveling in the worst time, which is the peak holiday season. <laughs> because it'd be much better for us, because we live here, that we could travel outside of that. So that, um, April's mother could be here for two, three months, and at the same time, it's in a weather that's not too hot, but also the the amount we spent on flights could be reduced as well, because instead of paying over a thousand euros a ticket, you pay 600. Um, but that's life, and we, we live with the hands we dealt and move forward from it. No point grumbling about it, but it does mean that here, I need to start moving things forward again. So every now and again, you get something that pulls you back. Last year, two deaths in the family hit us financially, um, and obviously in other ways. This year, 
We've now got into the position that we wanted to be in, where April's mother's now had her trip. April can now go back to the Philippines whenever she likes as well. And I can hop in and hop out as well. And we've got the two apartments now ready for the final phase of construction in the Philippines as well. Um, so that block's complete. And then we're going to start saving to buy the next um, piece of land to construct in the Philippines as well. Um, yeah, so things are evolving. And one of the things I do see with the uh, Ming Danilia as well, and I was talking to Jay about this about a week ago, is that they are going for city status. As you may or may not know, uh, it depends if you follow his channel, he's just got fiber optic. Now, I've been in the Philippines, what, 2008, 2007, and it's only just arrived in Ming Danilia. Um, that's showing the advancements in there because they are condensing the population. They're growing it at a rapid rate, which is another reason I want to buy a piece of land before it goes through the roof again. Um, yeah, so we'll wait and see. No rush. But like I said, progression time. Thanks for watching.